Hi friends, welcome back to the Project Return online classroom. I'm Miss Celia and today we're going to be practicing some acrylic painting techniques while creating a cool little space painting. Materials you're going to need for this are including your paper of course, some acrylic paint, a cup of water with brushes, a paper towel, and a sponge actually. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to be doing is begin building my background as usual. And I'm going for more of a gradient on this. As you'll see, I begin to blend more colors together. Um, something to be aware of is that if you are going to use lighter color, you're gonna wanna keep a white space so that the color will be more vibrant. Uh, if you want to avoid this or just don't realize that you're going to be adding lighter colors until you get there, I also show you another way that you can go ahead and do paint lighter colors over darker colors. But right now we are just Building up our background, I'm using blues, purples, and blacks because those are common colors seen in space and space art. And I'm just blending those together. Uh, you're gonna wanna start on one side. Uh, mine, I start on the top with blue and then blend in an upward down motion uh, to blend with that purple. And then I'm transitioning that purple into the black as well. Building your background, at least for me, always takes longer than painting in my details. I like to make sure my background is perfect because it sets a really nice foundation for the rest of the piece. So take your time blending your colors, making the background as perfect as you think it can get. When you finish your background and you move forward, it is always super, super important to clean your brushes so you don't mix any colors you don't want mixing. We're gonna go ahead and start on our first planet at the bottom. I'm putting down an orange base. I'm gonna use warmer colors, yellows, reds, and oranges in this one. And I'm kind of mimicking the sun, but I want it to be a planet. So it's gonna look pretty interesting. I'm going ahead and on top of my orange base, adding some yellow and red streaks, still with my red brush with paint on it. And then when I finish adding in those streaks, I'm going to wash off and completely dry my brush. And then with a dry brush, go in a circular motion around the planet to blend those together. Sticking to one color family in a single area is a really nice way to ensure that your colors will blend well together. You can stick with cooler tones like I did for the background or warmer tones like I did for this planet down here. I used yellows, oranges, and reds, which all blend really nicely together. Once I do get all of these blended, I'm taking the hard end of the brush, so not the bristle end. You flip it around that hard circular end and you can actually etch shapes and lines into your paint while it's still wet. It just adds some texture and dimension and also can be used to make motion lines. You can tell in the circular motion that I etched them that the planet is almost rotating. For this top planet, I'm creating a gradient but using a sponge instead. So you put your light colors on the top, dark colors on the bottom and blend them together using a sponge. It gives it a really interesting lighter effect rather than just straight paint like the background looks. A lot of the times when I paint, I add stuff as I go. This piece looked very unbalanced to me and I felt like I needed another planet on the top right corner, but I had already put down dark blacks and purples, but I wanted to make a lighter color. So once your background is completely dry, a good way to allow your brighter colors to pop is to put down a thin white layer of paint and then when this dries, put more paint on top of it. So as you can see here, my background is fully dry and I'm going ahead and putting in a large white circle. I'm gonna wait for this to dry before I start adding brighter, lighter colors on top of it.
This next method I'm using is called the wet on wet paint method. What you're gonna do is you're going to put down a very thin layer of clear water, just straight water down on your page. And then you're gonna also water down your acrylic paint so it comes to an almost watercolor consistency. Then you'll blob up some of that watery paint and dab it right on the paper where you put down the water. As you can see, it creates kind of a smoother, ripply type of look. It's a lot easier to blend, resembles closely to watercolor. So if you're familiar with painting watercolors, this is a good method to introduce you to acrylic paint. So as you see, I'm just taking my water and watering down my pink, yellow, and red paint. I take some water, mix it right on top of the paint on my palette, pick that reddish watery color up, and just dab it right on top. I think it gives a really cool, runny, acidy looking effect. And it's really interesting when you put it on something like a planet or a sun. It shows that there's different uh, materials there and it's just a really nice contrast from doing straight blending of regular paint. You can also pick up your paper and as you see, there's still a lot of water on it so it does move around. You can get those colors to blend together really well and then go ahead and add some more layers of that watery paint. It gives it a really interesting texture. point I'm just re-outlining my planets but I'm making sure to blend that outline in with the background. When you use a wet on wet method it's very easy for the paint that's watered down to spread to places you don't want it to go so you have to make sure that it dries thoroughly and also you can contain it into a very specific area. If it does move around a little too far like mine did you can always go back in with your background color and reshape the area. wanted to include some stars in my background but going in and painting every star individually can get a little tedious and monotonous uh, so I'm gonna do a splatter effect so this works best with a flat top brush and yes you are gonna get paint on your fingers what you're gonna do is you are going to go ahead and gather a good glop of white paint on your brush and then you're just going to flick the front of the bristles and that will give that cool splatter look that you see on the background now. I like doing this with scar stars and skies. I think it adds a really nice element and can also be used in a variety of other ways. For example, with water or anything else that needs to have a splattery look. And then I also decided last minute that I'm gonna add a little comet in there. Again, you're gonna wanna layer your lighter colors on top of your darker colors. You will need more paint uh, when you layer on top of darker colors, but the payoff is always so worth it. Feel free to add your own little touches or designs to your space painting. Make it unique, you know, make it you. Also, something to be aware of is that when you do a painting like this, especially with a wet on wet method or a painting where you are going to be layering paint on top of itself, it is very, very important that you give your painting the appropriate amount of time to dry. If you lift up your painting prematurely, paint might come off of it or it might get scratched, so make sure you leave it to dry. So this is how the finished product turned out. As you can see, every planet has different texture, different techniques being used, and even the background has completely different texture than the foreground with the planets. I encourage you guys to practice different methods of using acrylic paint. It really adds some interesting dimension to your pieces, and I love to see them. 
Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.